Has the Kodak price hike got you down? Or maybe you just want a smaller camera. What if you could hit both of those birds with one stone? Well, for your consideration, the Olympus Pen FT, a half frame camera. First off, this is not my camera. I've actually borrowed it from a friend for some testing because I was looking for a 35 millimeter travel and snapshot camera with interchangeable lenses while also being small and easy to use. And a half frame looked like it might be an option for this. So what is the Pen F? Well, the Olympus Pen F is a series of half frame cameras from the 1960s that shoot a vertical 18 by 24 millimeter frame on 35 millimeter film instead of the normal 36 by 24 frame. And this gives you a frame that is half the size of the normal frame. And that also means that you will get double the exposures per roll. So you'll get 72 shots on a normally 36 exposure roll. And it can also save you quite a few pennies in the film department. Now this particular camera is actually the Pen FT with a single stroke advanced lever. The very first version of the Pen F had a double stroke. And this also has an inbuilt uncoupled light meter. So how do you use one of these Pen FT camera thingy doodles? Well, let's start at the top. And first up we have our rewind crank which you then lift up to open the rear door for the film like every other film SLR we've got our spot for our film can to go take up spool sprocket drive and you'll notice the vertical half frame shutter and then moving across the top we have our serial number shutter button frame counter and over here we actually have something a little interesting this is part of the viewfinder so what it actually is, is the little window that lets in light, that lights up the meter reading. So if you block this with your finger accidentally while shooting it, you can't see the meter in the actual viewfinder itself. Moving around to the rear, we've got our viewfinder. This is an SLR camera, so it's a standard SLR viewfinder. Well, it looks like a standard SLR viewfinder. It's actually completely different in how it's constructed, and we'll get to that in a minute. Then here we have our film advance. Here is a port for your flash sync your PC port. On the bottom we have the battery cover, tripod socket and film rewind release. And then on the front of the camera we've got a few simple controls. We've got a self timer. Ta-da! Uh, we also have our shutter speed dial. And shutter speed range from one second up to one five hundredth of a second with a bulb mode. And then here we have our film speed, our ISO setting, which is on this camera because it's quite old, called ASA. To change that, you lift up the dial here and then you can turn this to change your ISO speeds. This camera can only go from 25 ISO up to 400 ISO on the internal meter. If you want to go more than that, you're probably going to need an external meter. Although given the weird, horrible meter in this thing, you'd just want to use an external meter anyway. Here on the lens, we've got our aperture ring. So this particular lens has the normal apertures. You know, it doesn't use the zero to seven funny aperture system that's kind of related to the meter in this. I'll talk about that in a bit. Here we've got our lens release. So we just push in the left button, turn, and out comes the lens. And it's just your kind of bog standard SLR lens. This button here is the stop down for the lens. See that the lens is stopping down. Now to get onto the camera's oddities. And the first one is, you will notice that the mirror is sideways. This actually surprised me quite a lot when I first seen it, but it makes sense because you want to make the mirror as small as possible and have a travel in the shortest axis. And the shortest axis in this case is the horizontal axis. So the mirror needs to flip sideways. And then you can see the focusing screen on the side. The mirror flips to the side and now the film is being exposed and with the fact that the focusing screen is on the side of the mirror box with a side folding mirror the prism system or the viewfinder is very unusual and that is because the optical path for it is not just up and back like a normal SLR like you know your f3 or something instead it goes sideways upwards and then it goes there's a meter here in the top of the camera somewhere this is the little meter reading for the needle and then it goes horizontal and then out the viewfinder. So as far as I'm aware, there's no actual prism in here. It's all done with mirrors, I believe. 
and it ends up taking this like sideways up back left out path so when you're looking through the actual viewfinder you can see kind of edges of all the mirrors and it's a pretty wild looking viewfinder the viewfinder in this one's actually quite dirty and um, sort of dim and unfortunately you can't really access the viewfinder because it's going through the crazy optical path inside the camera itself it's not like you can just pop off the prism and give it a clean another unusual thing you might notice is that there is no hot shoe at all this is actually kind of nice because it doesn't get caught on stuff when you're taking it in and out of a bag but it means you can't mount a meter or a flash now if you want to do that i believe there's an attachment that fits down here over the eyepiece that slots down and adds a little shoe here that you can mount I don't actually have that accessory, so I don't know. So. so in most 35 millimeter film cameras, they use dual cloth shutters. And effectively, it's two curtains wound up, so then one opens and the other one closes the shutter. So if we fire this SP, we can see that it opens and then closes using horizontally traveling shutter curtains. And what the Pen FT uses instead of the dual cloth shutter is a rotary titanium shutter, which is really unusual for a stills camera at least. So what actually happens here is that this kind of titanium shutter rotates or kind of spins around and opens and closes in that way. Now, if you know anything about how shutters work, this might sound very familiar to you if you know how a movie film camera works. They have a rotating shutter, which is a disc with a piece cut out of it, which is your shutter angle, by the way. So 180 degree shutter will be half the disc open, half closed, and it spins around as the film advances, allowing it to expose each frame of the film. Why this is interesting is because the Pen F shoots a half frame, which is very, very close in size to the Super 35 frame size that a 35 millimeter movie camera uses because they run the film vertically like this through the camera with a rotating shutter in front of it. So if you're an engineer in the 60s working in Olympus designing a half frame camera, you don't want to be trying to make a miniature version of a cloth-based shutter system that, you know, a, a normal 35 mil frame would use. Instead, it would make more sense to copy the technology from the cinema industry and use a rotary shutter because the frame size is about the same size. You could probably buy in the parts or copy some other designs and it would make things a lot easier to do, which I think is quite interesting and probably why this has an interesting shutter. So let's start off strong with the good points. It's a half frame camera, so you get twice the shots on the roll, but you do sacrifice some image quality. However, it's not as big of a drop as I would have thought, given it's half the frame area, but I would avoid super high ISO films, so maybe don't go shooting Ektachrome P800-1600 in this. 
Now I only had one lens to use, the 38mm f1.8, and I found it to be super sharp and really nice to use. It basically feels like a mini OM lens, which makes sense because that's what it is. Now another thing I liked was the lack of a prism hump and its smooth curvy exterior, which actually made it a very nice camera to walk around with because it didn't get caught on anything taking it in and out of a bag or a pocket, which is very nice. A lot of SLRs can actually be really annoying to get in and out of a bag when traveling. But it's not all sunshine roses and cheap per shot photos. There are a few issues I had with this camera. Now this might be a personal issue, but I found the camera super hard to load. Getting the film to catch on the take up spool just wasn't happening and it took me multiple attempts. So that was quite annoying, however that might be an issue with this camera or just how I'm loading it. Also, don't get excited for the fact that it has a light meter because it's not great. It's an old selenium meter and it uses those old mercury batteries which don't exist anymore. So to use the meter you have to hunt down an adapter or use a zinc air battery to run the meter accurately. But honestly, it might all be for naught because the meter is not coupled to the lens which is quite annoying when you want to use the camera quickly but the real issue is the incredibly stupid meter reading method. So the meter is a shutter priority meter and is based on the ISO and shutter speed selected. So then you would expect the meter to say, for these settings, what the correct aperture is to use. But it doesn't. Instead, it gives you this reading from zero to seven, which is the number of stops you need to stop down the lens from the max aperture. If you have a meter reading of two on an F2 lens, then you need to step down two stops to f5.6 on the lens before you shoot. If it's at zero, then you need to shoot wide open. Now these numbers can make a little bit more sense as some of the lenses have these numbers on the aperture ring, so you just use the number that it says, you just turn the aperture ring to match. But some of the lenses, like this 38mm f1.8, don't have these numbers. Also the lenses with these odd numbers have the ability to flip the aperture ring around and to use normal f-stops. So when I use this camera, I actually just ignore the internal light meter entirely and use my external TT Artisan meter. Now, another issue with this camera is the viewfinder. It's small, but that's expected because it's a half frame, but it's also super dim. Now, this might be an issue with this particular camera, but I actually found it very hard to focus and compose on this with the f1.8 lens. Also, the focusing screen on this one only had the micro prism focusing aid, which I don't use. I much prefer using a split image focusing aid, and this one just doesn't have that, so I just didn't enjoy that. Once I got through the 72 frames, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually a crap ton to shoot, particularly on a manual camera where you have to deal with winding every frame, you then have to deal with scanning half frames. Now, if you get the film scanned at a lab, you will most likely get back 36 scans with two frames on each scan. It's the easiest way for them to scan it because then they don't have to adjust the scanner for funny half frame rolls. As for me, I used my DSLR scanner rig with the D850 in DX mode, so it's still a one to one ish scan and it gave some very nice results. Much better than I thought it was given the frame size. So now the question is will I actually buy a Olympus Pen F half frame camera? And the answer is no. And it's actually a very simple reason the camera doesn't have the automatic functions I'm looking for. So what I'm actually looking for in my travel camera is I want something with interchangeable lenses, but I also want it to be automatic. So it wants autofocus, I want automatic film advance, I want automatic exposure and light metering that's reliable and is coupled properly. And the Pen F doesn't actually satisfy any of those. Now having twice the frames when you're traveling actually is quite appealing, but it just doesn't override the other inconveniences I found in the camera. However, I did realize that the act of using the camera, particularly getting it in now a bag easily, is incredibly valuable for when you're traveling. During my recent trip to Japan, I found that getting the F3 in now the bag with its big prism hump was actually quite frustrating. So I'm trying to find something that satisfies all of those requirements. And the only thing I can think of is a Contax G1. And that just means I suppose it's time to open eBay and buy a G1. Anyway, See you next time.